So really happy to be sharing this episode with you. As you can see, everyone downstairs is lapping up the pool and the beach is empty and you're gonna find out why in just a second in the view because I share it. But why I really wanted to share this episode with you is because, let's be brutally honest, there are some very tough times when it comes to you building your business. It's not all rainbows, it's not all sunshine, it's not all fun and games, and there is some times where you're gonna to have to be able to push through. You're gonna to have to have some faith in yourself. And that's why I really wanted to share with this episode with you because we go into it. What I've been able to get through, what we are able to do with clients, what are the trainers, the coaches, out there getting through it because when it comes to you being able to break through those barriers then you're going to know what are actually some practical steps that you're going to be able to go through and I want you to know that you're not alone when it comes to this as well and that's really importantly why I wanted to share this we also jump into money management we also talk about how do you manage yourself how do you personally become the best person that you need to be able to become to be the best entrepreneur to build the best business to have the impact that you want with your expertise with your experience with your passion so you can create the freedom that you want so you can earn the money that you want and just so you can have more fun whilst making your mark along the way as well so I'm pretty pumped up to be sharing this with you I'd love to hear from you after this episode in the fitness business success circle so I'll pop a link below for you to join the free group because this is where you'll get access to the free guides the programs I'm in there answering your questions plus all the episodes as well so looking forward to hearing from you after this Dude, it looks beautiful out there. Actually, you know what? This is funny. So I'm sitting on a rocking chair on this balcony. It's actually, so today here in Bali, it's called Nepi, the day of silence. So anyway, with the Balinese, huh? you're actually not allowed to go outside your complex. So like, so how's this? So we're staying at this really cool, um, so, you can see what's going on. so like down here, there's like this massive pool and stuff. Oh my there's God. Like a restaurant. So you can see like the beach, like, Oh, I'm no one's out yeah. there. No one's there. No one's there. No, no one's on the beach. Like, no one's out. So you can see, like, we literally can't cross that little bit there. So, like, everyone's in here. Like, we're all kind of, like, stuck in here for the what? day. And it's, like, it's amazing because I'm, like, look at the beach. It's so gorgeous. And, like, the surf before was really good. And it's, like, there is no one out there. Um, and it's, like, is it, like, a national thing? Yeah, it's a national thing. Like, the the, um, the airport's even fully closed out. Like, you, if you went outside, that's what's called the banja, which is, like, it's, like, the local police. They're, like, the actual police that get shit done. Yeah. Um, they, like, they'll, like, lock you up. you like, you'll get in trouble. you get what in serious trouble if you fuck? go outside. It's really funny. So, it's, yeah, we totally respect it. So, we're here. Um, Sunny, my one-year-old, she's asleep behind me. And oh. my wife and Arlo are down in the pool somewhere. That's so, badass. Yeah, so it's okay. So you're all just chilling so, for the yeah. day. Just chilling for the day. Doing this with you. That's all right. Bad. Let's fill up and roll. Matters. Let's go. I, so quick question. We spoke about your studies to become a personal trainer when you were working at the bar. You're putting in some serious hours between working at the bar between 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. then going to night study. How did you manage your time to make that possible? How did you push through being tired? And more importantly, how did you stay focused on the end goal when others were telling you to do other things? Like, like, all right, Chris, this is cool. You know, you did your whole personal trainer thing, you know, but get a real job. Like, mm -hmm. be realistic. But like, were you hit with that often? Yeah, I, I was a couple of times um, from friends, some family. And it's an interesting thing because I've actually had a lot of clients come to me recently and they've said they've copped that a lot. And like I've like, so like the trainers will come and be like in desperation mode. And they're like, I need to like, if this doesn't work, I need to get a real job. And I'm like, this is a real job, mofo. Like this is what it yeah. is. Do you know what I mean? Like you make it a real job. You got to get serious about it. Um, how do you push through those tough times? Like you've got to one be super clear that on what you really want to achieve. Two, understand that there's a process. I actually did a post the other day. I'm not done it yesterday. I don't know. But I was talking about, so I was doing some sprints in the gym. And I was like halfway through an interval. Like when you're in a workout, when you're doing sprints, when you're under the bar, you're training, you enjoy the burn. Like the burn is like, okay, yeah. this lactate, this nitrogen buildup in my muscle right now. Like this is a process and you will know it's a good thing. That's what you have to embrace in life. Like, are you enjoying the burn of life, of building the business? Like, it's not all fun and games. Like, you will never always wake up 
and go, I feel like I really want to train today. Like I really want to bust my nuts in the gym. Do you know what I mean? That's not going to happen. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So it's the same thing with your business such as, okay, I want to be able to get where I want to, what I call achievement. And therefore I have to go through this process to get there. And that means sometimes there's going to be some hard times. So understand where you want to go at the end of the day, understand that the process, have the right plan and just put your head down and get the job done. So I want to build off what you just said. So obviously what you did turned out to be very successful. So like, let's say if someone is going into something and let's like, we'll apply this to a life perspective as well. Um, they're going to this training and they're just not seeing the results they wanted. Um, regardless of what they're doing in life, it's, it's like shit. I mean, I'm not getting any results. It's been six months. No one cares. No one's paying attention. If, if you were in a position to where you're, tr- you're talking to somebody and they're at that six month, 12 month mark, even though in the grand scheme of things, that's not long at all. And they're just discouraged. What do you tell them? Do you say, dude, keep going? Or do you say, hey, maybe it's time to reevaluate this? What, like, what are your aspects on that? And what, at what point do you tell them to change their mind on that? Really good question. Because the thing is, if you keep running west, chasing for a sunrise, you ain't going to get there. So it's a really good question because you have to know that, sorry, you don't have to know. You have to have faith and you have to believe in what it is that you're doing is going to get to where you go. So absolutely, yep. I'm all for having periods of and times of reflection and actually going like, am I doing the right thing? Like I've gone through this many times. There was one like only a few months ago and I seriously sat back. I was like, some bad shit went down, just wasn't in a great place, but it's a good thing because you turn around and you go, is this really what I want? And like, I mean like, like truly getting like stripping away all what other people think you should be doing, stripping away what society says you should be doing and really getting within yourself. I know we're going deep here, but let's, let's run with it. Well, and really yeah, understanding we need to. where like, what is it that you want? Do you know what I mean? I've got this one mate. He was a really good copywriter, entrepreneur, awesome dude. And he came about um, going, I want to become a DJ. Like, I really enjoy this. And he, so he set his business up where he could have some awesome passive income, could only spend like two hours on it a week and was doing really well. And now he's fully gone down the DJ path. And I was like, that is fucking awesome because you are following your passion at the end of the day. You're not going because it's really easy. Like, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I start a business. Therefore, I have to stick with my business. Like, this is what I do. Is it what you want to do? It do like, Do you want to become a millionaire? Do you really have to become a millionaire? Like there's so many preconceived things and this is actually something I get really deep with my clients at the moment. I'm like, oh, seriously, like what do you really want? Like let's get down to the basics right now because I feel like, and this is because I feel like for years myself I was going through it, I was chasing shit that really wasn't what I truly wanted. It's what I told myself what I wanted. But when I got deep and figured out, I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this is what I want to be able to do. Because unfortunately, and I'm coming from the perspective of, you know, the last few years, I've worked really hard and I've spent a lot of time and I've always tried to find that balance of becoming the entrepreneur and business owner that I want, but also being the husband, the father, the friend, the man that I want to be as well and being able to have that balance. Because like the thing as well is like, say for my daughters right now, like, they need a dad. I want to be a present dad. I don't want to be a guy that's just in an office 24-7 missing out on their yeah. life. Like That's not cool for, for what I believe in as well. So I think if you truly know what it is that you want and you've got faith behind it, that's the shit where you're willing to put your head on the chopping block for and you will get the work done. So I love that so much because one thing I've thought about the most, dude, we have so many podcasts of people trying to tell people how to live, people trying to tell people, you know, shit's going to be great if you just do this. But God, no one wants to be a human. Yeah. Seriously, no one wants to admit that they're going through tough shit. Yeah. And dude, I'm so happy you said that. That's going to be that. That's yeah. It's huge just I'll, in I'll general. Be really up front. I was actually on a client call this Good. morning. <clears throat> so this client turned around and goes, oh, I'm just not that motivated at the moment. Um, and I, I think I'm just want to pause for a couple months and then I'm going to come back in. I go, let's jump on a call. I go, what's going on? 
Um, I was like, oh, I'm just not that motivated. And I was like, seriously, you're a big boy. What's going on? Let's talk about this. Two minutes in, um, my client's crying. And by no far, he's definitely not the first client to be crying on the call. Like, And I was like, I get this. You're going through a hard time. And I was like, what is it he wants? So I go, you've got one thing to do today. I want you to sit down in a quiet place. I want you to journal and I want you to write about what is it that you want. Just free flow, just let it come out on paper. Put pages out, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And he was able to come back to me. He's like, thank you so much. That was probably one of the best things I've ever done. I have clarity on what it is that I want. And the thing is, we all go through hard times. Like it's, it, it can be really lonely being an entrepreneur, really lonely. Because the thing is, by the basis of being it, you've got to be the person that sees something in the future and it goes, okay, I believe that we can get there and you're the one that's got to rally the people around and you've got to rally, most importantly, yourself around as well. And we're all going to have moments of despair, of disbelief, of shitty times and that's where you should always reach out. Have a, not have a coach, you don't have to have a coach, but have a, a mastermind, some people around you that you can go to that you can really talk the truth and not be judged. Yeah. That's huge. That, that's everything. I spoke with a Zach Evanesh uh, a couple weeks ago, and he said the exact same thing, man. Surrounding yourself with people who love you and care for you and honestly want the best and doing everything you can to just figure th those things out is huge. Um, we'll step things back, get a little bit more practical. Um, when you're running the business, how, how at, that, at that time, how old were you when you're starting everything up? Everything was starting to get rolling. Uh, with that, with the in-person personal training. Eighteen. Holy oh, shit! 19. <laughs> okay, so you're eighteen, nineteen years old, and you have some actual cash coming in. Yeah. How did you manage everything? I'm suspecting you made some eighteen and nineteen year old mistakes, just with like all the cash coming in. You know, managing everything. You know, what were like the big mistakes that? that you made that you would be like, uh, you'd be willing to share with everybody, oh, you know, yeah, avoid totally. these things. I'm, I'm willing to share everything. It's all cool. I, um, yeah, like, okay. So obviously personal training, the first thing, and I remember this so clearly because this was something I saw super early on and that I knew I saw other trainers that I looked up to and they were busy charging heaps, full books, all good. And just collecting cash, like, wads of cash. I was like, this guy's, <laughs> either dealing coke or is a PT he's dealing with a lot of cash <laughs> right now and so anyway they were just purely just cash spend do you know what I mean save it yep. but what can you really do and I learned uh, like from the start and I was like you can't do that because what do you do when you want to buy a house like do you know what I mean like grow a life like, okay. like, you can't just deal with that sort of paper stuff. trail exactly so you're going to have to declare taxes. It's a, you get, it's okay to pay taxes. Obviously, you don't want to overpay. But like I yep. bought my first place, um, real estate at 21. And I remember like having the, like the deposit. Like it was a lot of money and just being able like, yep, right, <laughs> boom. Do you know what I mean? Throw that stuff down. Um, so I could save cash really easy because you see the build up, You see the numbers going. So I always say with money management, know your numbers first just know your numbers i'm always appalled with how many business owners especially in the health and fitness world just don't know their numbers i don't know how many clients they have what a client is worth to them how much money are you bringing in per week how much money did you bring in last month what's your forecast for next month like just some basic like p l stuff that is yeah. just like lets you go right i know what's going on with my money right now because it's easy to put your head in the sand and just kind of forget about it so it's always once you know what your numbers are and then obviously design the business about where you want to go. How do you actually start dealing with money? I think you should always, I'm a big believer of say, put at least 10% away and pay yourself first. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then obviously build that number up and know- Pre or post taxes. You, exactly, exactly. Do you know what I mean? You want to start building your future for what you want to be able to do. Um, and there's like, it's not rocket science at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Gotcha. Did you did you invest in like uh, real estate assets like at a young age, or did you? Is that when you bought your first house? Yeah, I bought my first place at twenty one. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so twenty one year old Chris going through everything, practical and basic 
thing everybody asks, but what's one thing you would tell him just in general life based? It could be business. It could be life. You know, what's one practical thing? Like really think on this one new. Dude, wow. I, I'm going for yeah, like I, yeah, I want these questions Fucking to be pumping deep. This. this is great. All right. Um, what would I tell 21-year-old Chris? Don't be a douche. Um, chill out. Enjoy. Sure. Smell the roses as you go along. I Elaborate. I have been very the type of person that's been like, that's where I want to go. That's what I want to achieve. And just like head down, bum up go get it done. Um, And I feel like I've really enjoyed this journey that I've been on. Like I really have, and I've gotten better and better, but especially in like the last six months for where I am right now, I'm really being able to work on myself and being able to enjoy and be present in each and every moment as well. Like don't, don't lose life trying to chase after something because it's the journey of you actually getting there that matters. It's who you become along the way that is the real fruit that you're going to be able to pick. And it's because you're not always going to get to that end achievement or it's going to change and you're going to go slightly somewhere else. And that's perfectly fine. And as you're enjoying the process and just like truly being conscious of what's going on, that is where it's at. Like it's something I write in my journal every single morning is like I'm conscious and in the moment. Um, all throughout the day because I want to be able to enjoy it because with all seriousness, I could die this afternoon. Do you know what I mean? And like, yep. that would not be cool. And I don't want to, I don't want for that to happen. And for me to have the thought of like, fuck, I could have done this smarter. Do you know what I mean? And I could have enjoyed it a bit more because that would truly suck. Yeah. So I'm going to throw a random ball a random shot out to you from 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 a third third base and outside field three tips you give a listener who's a young man uh 18 20 20 early 20s coming up three tips you would give him on presentation either getting a clean ass hair like you (laughs) what what, three three presentation Uh, this is funny because i was going to shave but i'm going to get a proper cutthroat shave tomorrow so i'm I'm normally i'm talking about the taper you have the taper you got i'll get a haircut too as well um grooming wise yeah take care of yourself haircut every 10 days um i always like to stay cleanly shaven like i will shave probably every couple of days I, you could probably start to see it already and I'm really sorry for you and the listeners, but I do go very Mexican. My Hispanic heritage comes down and I look like a Mexican <laughs> when I start to grow facial hair. It's not a good look. So I'm not, I'm not the dude that's going to have the beard. It's, no, no, it's not for me. I'm sorry. I'd rather do it. But yeah, keep like, do you know what I mean? I know so one, that like, one is grooming. Groom, groom yourself. Two, eat well. Like seriously, I don't care. You don't have to be in the health and fitness game. But if you want to be the best person that you can be, and it's funny because I'm just finishing my next book, which is called The Real Truth About Weight Loss. But like weight loss is the what the ego is talking about. And that's cool. I understand that because I was there and I want to talk to that. But it's you becoming a better person. You want to have better brain cognition, better memory. You just want to be less of a douchebag and be able to like get stuff done really well, be creative. And that's what being an entrepreneur is. It's being creative. It's being able to bring value to where there was no value before eat well because you want to fuel yourself um and second thing is as well and this goes into it and this because i've literally been drowning in reading studies recently on this is movement you okay. can move every single day um yeah a quick movement routine quick one it, walk, you can make a walk, video maybe out, do you walk, have any videos it. i can go like a walk I, I'm going to shoot a video tomorrow because I'm actually, we're leaving Bali um, tomorrow night and there's this one rice paddy walk that I literally walked on except for today and the other near piece because I wasn't allowed out of the house. Um, I've walked on every single morning whilst I've been here in Bali and I'll shoot a video because it's my last one there. But it's walk, just get up, walk. After this, I'm actually going downstairs and doing some sprints um, on a bike. Movement. Feed yourself properly um, and take care of yourself. Okay. Last thing. Give us some tips about – so you said the eight truths about weight loss? Uh, sorry, the Is real the truth book? about weight loss. There, there I, are a lot give of us tips. a break in, Give us a look into it at least. You do not need to count calories. Stop focusing on 
quantity so much and think about quality. So enjoy the food that you eat. Because the thing is, I want you to be able to eat your favorite foods. I love cookies and ice cream. And I found this place around the corner from here where they actually make the ice cream in front of you. So they put the gelato in and they put nitrogen and they whip it up. Yeah, but then they make this cookie sandwich. And I'm like frothing at the mouth. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, yes, this is my jam right now. My wife, Lauren, she's like, she's eating some ice cream. Like, she's, she's like, this is good. And I'm like, nah, this is my jam. This like, is this great. Is what I'm about right now. <laughs> yeah. like, I am euphoric. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I want to be in good shape. I want to be functioning well as well. So weight loss is a simple, easy um, venture and we should all be able to look, feel, function the best way possible as well. And it's an enjoyable process. So that's what you'll be able okay, to do. We're, we're running on the end of this. I want to say one last thing. Run us through real quick uh, daily what, what your life looks like, maybe any routines you have. And lastly, because you're talking about like the eating everything, I want everybody to check out this this book. I want them to get an idea. You know, What does it look like for you like a, a day in the life of Chris, like any routines you have? And then yeah. what does a day look like with you eating? Cool. Um Okay, daily routine, I normally just have my morning routine, which is walk downstairs, drink about a liter of water with like lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, Um, then it'll be jump in the pool or have a cold shower, usually jump in the pool because that's more fun, Um, then I'll have like super quick stretch and then I'll meditate for 20 minutes, I'll journal and the journal will simply be maybe if I just want to write my thoughts, see what's going on, but then I'll talk about the things that I want for my life to become, and I'll talk in the present tense, and then I'll always finish it off with um, what am I grateful for, and I'll also say I will be um, I'll be proud of myself tonight and for the reason that I want to be proud of myself tonight. So I'll be saying what I want to achieve that day. I like that. Then what I also do is I do an audio recording for one person every day to say thank you to them. So I'll choose someone and I'll just be like, Nathan, thank you so much for doing what you do, being who you are, bringing so much value to the world, bringing so much value to me, blah, blah, blah. I send a personal message and I just send it to them on audio. Um, And I never expect a reply. I just want that person to have a smile and that's it. Yeah. And then I jump straight into work for the day. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much like the one routine that I would stick to um, each and every day. How do I feed myself? Um, I've really come into, I know like there's a lot of stuff that like intermittent fasting and stuff like that. Okay. But to be really honest, like, yes, I do intermittent fasting, but I have a rule with fasting that like you should never be a douchebag. So you never get hangry. You should never be like, oh my God, this sucks. Because once it gets to that point, Uh, you're doing it wrong. That's not a good thing. So I will usually eat my first meal between 11 and 2. Um, Obviously, if I'm like, maybe if I want to try and get bigger, put more muscle on, I'll be eating a bit earlier because I want to get more food in throughout the day. I'll just see how I feel. Before that, I'm either drinking water or one coffee. Um, And then I usually just keep all my carbs for the end of the day. Um, or if I'm really focusing on trying to build some more muscle mass, which I'm not really, but, um, I might put more carbs, uh, around my workout, but usually I just save my carbs for the end of the day. So think of the start of the day is more protein and fat. And then end of the day is like protein, veg and some carbs. And then, yeah. Now it's time for you to get the most out of this. And this is where I can jump in and give the answers that you need. So ask your questions in the comments below so I can personally come through and answer them for you. Plus, the best discussions happen on chrisdufay.com. So click on over to get everything that I've got there for you. And did you like this episode? Because if so, click subscribe so I can send you all the episodes to come for free straight to you. And for everything that I can't fit in these episodes, plus the free guides and coaching episodes, then click on over to chrisdufay.com now. Looking forward to seeing you soon and in the success community.